Never eat shredded wheat. What's up my peoples? Jeff, I'm here to give you one of these videos again. Let's look at a comic book. Let's look at Jeff and Taylor, episode 11, DJ. I just released this episode um, not too long ago. Well, it was like a, well, a week and a half ago. But I decided to, hey, I'm going to show you the, the pages one by one and tell you guys my explanations on, on certain jokes, on certain dialogue, uh, the whole story in general, and show you some uh, fun facts and uh, some cameos here and there. So I'll try to make this uh, 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 video short. I mean, don't want it to be too long. I want it to be at least 18 minutes or something like that. 18 minutes to 30 minutes around there so let's stop wasting time so here we go this is the cover that I that I uh, did a long time ago last year yeah I did this uh, over a year ago when I was gonna do the hundred days of comic challenge but that was a fail and if you wanna see the first draft of this episode just go to my other channel and uh, I'll release it there some uh, someday <laughs> this month maybe uh, yeah, so this is it. Let's uh, zoom in on this. Added some texture to DJ. Some flameage. Which is a... This is a kind of bad on my part because there there's no fire in the... In the in the actual showdown. You know, when they go to the junkyard. But yeah, here's Taylor's headband, Jeff's hat. The, uh... Um, the, the, the gun is right here. A whole bunch of weird stuff is in this pile of, uh, junk. And yeah, let's go to the first page. So these pictures here, I actually um, drew first, and then I just copy and pasted here on the comic, just just for consistency's sake. And yeah, this is I remember this is the very first time I actually uh, experimented with uh, Clip Studio Paint, and it was very good. I love it. And look at this, as Jane comes in. I forgot to draw her backpack like a dweeb. So yeah, her backpack magically appears in the next page. See? The straps and everything. So, a little bit of foreshadowing. Uh, Taylor says, Jeff's never good at smiling for pictures. He tries too hard and ends up looking like a maniac who wants to hurt people. So yeah, that's probably a little clue on how... why the, uh, the, the so-called photo booth makes evil clones like that. Maybe it's a reflection on the per how, how the person looks on the picture. You never know. It's a mystery. And yeah, I made Jane a bit more folksier in this episode. Well, I think you look mighty charming, Jeff. Well, yeah. Shoo, quit lying. It's like... It's like she's one step below Lily when it comes to the southern talk. So, yeah... Yeah, there's another picture, uh, the cutest Jane picture I've ever drew. <laughs> so, yeah, and now it's in Jeff's hands. Oh lordy. So, yeah, here we go. Here's a little taste of uh, some mature humor. Uh, spank bank. Got to add a masturbation joke there. Okay, but that's Cassidy for you. That's her. That's in her character. That's what she does. And of course, Taylor and Jane, they're innocent, so they don't know what a spank bank is. And right here, we get a look at uh, Kim's modern house. Uh, I, d I decided, hey, her house should be uh, a bit cool looking. Something that you you guess that a scientist would uh, would have. And right here, I had a had a I had a hard time coming up with a name for this thing. And yes, I did d uh, grip it off a super soaker. And I was search I was researching um, uh, measurements of pressure, and I saw Tor, and I thought, hey, Tor sounds more scientific. So I did my little calculations. Um, if a regular super soaker uh, shoots at 40 psi, which is um, I don't know something Tor, I upped the uh, the psi. I think um, I think I typed in 500 psi, and then it came up with 25,000 Tor. So I'm like, okay. So this is 500 PS, uh, PSI compared to 40 PSI with a regular Super Soaker. So yeah. 
And of course, Jeff doesn't listen because he's uh, distracted by the picture. And now Doc knows. Now Kim knows about uh, Jeff's crush. And yeah, she answers the phone, and she has to leave the the the, the lab somehow, just so we can get to our uh, plot, our main event, or something. And yeah, I added Acid 500's little um, cannon thing here. And uh, right here, I remember it was during the playoffs that I was um, drawing, or, or actually coloring this page. The Seahawks versus the, the Panthers, I think. And yeah, I drew the Seahawks logo here. Yeah, so that's a little bit of trivia there. And here we go, this is the photo booth. Look at that. And some posters, look at this. Beware the Turbo Tunnel. Yes, the Turbo Tunnel from Battletoads. I was listening to um, some um, some um, some Let's Play Battletoads stuff. It was actually a race like between four friends to see who can beat Battletoads. Yeah. Keep calm and wear your lab coat. And yeah. Had to make an excuse to say, hey, this is... Uh, this is not big enough for two people. Just for one, you know, because it's a cloner. Nah, I'm saying. And yeah, Taylor is uh, too naive, or I want to say stupid, but he's too naive to notice, hey, this looks strange. Well, 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 here's the power cord. And as for this, I was aiming for a Max Hendrum kind of a uh, thing. If you ever seen Back to the Future 2, you know, when Marty McFly enters the Cafe 80s, and then he sees that Ronald Reagan-looking guy, the machine, and he's like, well, Welcome to the Cafe 80s, where it's always morning in America, even in the afternoon at noon. <laughs> so, I wanted to do something with this. It's like, Gemini for photo booth, would you like to welcome you, 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 you know, like that. It's broken. That's what I want I want, to I want portray here. It's, it's a broken machine. And yeah, it's broken because look, it's that this, this isn't Jeff. I mean, it is, but it doesn't look like him. So yeah, they assume it's broken and they leave. And then the whole washing machine thingy just just uh gets all crazy and stuff. But look at this. This is in Kim's lab. Look, miniature figurines of SpongeBob, um, Squidward, and Patrick's houses. Look at that. I just decided, hey, and this little orb, I, I don't know what it is, a books, random books, a race car, a little lamp, and a syringe from, uh, actually it's Simpack from Fallout 4. <laughs> Simpack. And yeah, I actually uh, copy and pasted, I, okay, I'm a, I, I can cheat, I'm a cheater, but I copy and pasted this little angle from uh, the last episode, episode 10. Except I changed the uh, the lighting, I uh, you know I changed what which rooms are being lit, and I got rid of the beach ball here. And I don't know, I just, Maria's head looks so big here. I don't know, man. Uh, inconsistency. And look at this, this little uh, Kool Aid uh, cup. This is based on a Kool Aid cup that I had when I was little. Every time when I go to my grandma's house, um, they had this Kool Aid cup, this blue Kool Aid cup. And then I drink water out of it. it. It makes water taste so much better. So I added it here. It's Maria's now. Alright, so right here, Cindy looks at Jane's face for the first time. Uh, in picture form. And, yeah, she teases Jeff a little bit. Wonderful sister-in-law, you know. And David, his only appearance. He has to be bitter because this is his only appearance. Uh, he'll have a bigger role in a future episode. Uh, he'll actually he'll be he'll have a very big role in episode 15 um, Circus stars. So yeah Poor Jeff. He has to uh, listen to all these people And yeah right here I can whoa Excuse me. I want to zoom in properly It's bugging out or something It's so cool how it's uh, doing that by itself. 
cool. I don't know. Alright, so, but this really speaks to me because I don't want to lose what I have with her. Yeah, whenever I have crushes on girls, like a friend or something like that, and then I'm afraid to tell them because it might ruin the friendship or something, you know? It's like if I have a, if I have a crush on, or if I fall in love with my best friend or something like that, and I, and I tell her and she rejects, I would not be upset, you know? I would, you know, just, uh, just, uh, treat her the, the same, but I will throw away any delusions of, uh, of uh, any, uh, romantic relationship, but, yeah. Oh, and this right here, I, a little cameo, not cameo, a little reference. This is Mabel's mouth. You know when Mabel does that, uh, uh, cute puffy cheeks thing? Yeah, I, 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 I put it in, I, I had Maria do that. Mostly because she's eating something, but, but still. And here we go. Here's DJ, and he looks very flat in this in this picture. Very flat. And yeah, we see that he is not a a very uh, polite character because he swears. And yeah, it, it, some of my uh, some of my readers uh, actually uh, liked the swearing, and some of them didn't. And that's okay. I mean, DJ is the only character that does this because he's meant to be a a character that shocks you. He's meant to really stand out from Jeff and stand out from the other characters. It's like, hey, this is not a standard procedure, you know. This is, this is a, a very serious guy. And this song that Kim's singing in the shower, I just made it up. I'm, I'm not gonna sing it for you, uh, uh, because I, because I, I don't know how it sounds like. A bump and grind, yeah. Huh. And yeah. DJ goes to the the rundown streets of Somerville, South Booty Street. Okay, this is based off of uh, South Cushman Street in uh, in my you know in Fairbanks where I live, and I was like thinking of an alternative name like Cushman, Tushman, Tush, Tushy, Booty. There we go. So that's how I got the name Booty. And what DJ says here is, is something that I like to say. They ain't seen no muffle like me. Because it's based off of a... Off of, you know, in a boxing match. Long time ago when Floyd Mayweather fought Oscar De La Hoya. And Floyd's uncle slash trainer. After the first round, he said, He ain't seen no muffle like you. And I'm like, hey, that sounded, that sounded cool. So I'm going to copy that. So every time, uh, uh, sometimes I like to say, they ain't seen no muffle like me. So I, so now DJ says it. And he, right here, this, this guy, uh, the leader of the gang, he's Daryl from Tough Enough One. This is a wrestling reality show, and DJ makes a, a reference off of that. And look at this, it's One Punch Man. Yes, this is One Punch Man. I'm, I'm, you know, I changed his look just a tad bit to prevent any, um, shenanigans, unwanted buffoonery from copyrights, you know, maybe, I don't know, let's just say he's just a bald guy, alright, and this little scene here is supposed to imitate The Last Supper from, Le from you know, Leonardo da Vinci, so you know, uh, Daryl is Jesus, and uh, this, and, uh, this guy here is the feminine looking guy, and yeah, the little gestures that they do, it's so cool. It's like they're posing for gang. It's like they're posing for a photo, the gang signs or something like that. Just like in The Last Supper. And DJ pokes at his insecurities, Daryl. And so, you know, DJ doesn't mess around. He has that Shawn Michaels super kick move. If I were to have a super move, a superhero move or something like that, if I were to have something, it would be a Shawn Michaels super kick. Sweet chin music, that's what it is. Just to, you know, just to do it to people who disagree with me, you know? <laughs> I don't know, I'm not that mean. And thump. Yes, this is, this, this little, it, this little panel is supposed to be a, a sister panel, I shall say that, of when Talos killed Sam Dusa in episode 10. It's supposed to look like that. And I might add something like this in the, in the 12th episode too. Yeah, these guys are surprised. DJ makes a manly face. And he says, which one of you pasty honkies is next? And yes, I know what a honky is. I just think it's hilarious that people call, you know, if DJ were to call this multicultural group a group of honkies, you know. Yeah, speaking of honkies, Mr. White was here. 
uh, from Breaking Bad, he he wrote his name, and then he wrote no, and then under Daryl's shoe is sin, because it's a little foreshadowing that DJ is sinful, and they look so scary here, man. Gosh, next page. So here we go, DJ making his wonderful Plankton impression. Who can stop me? Who? That's from the Spongebob movie. And look at that, Somerville Middle School, or Junior High School, as they said it, as they say it. Alright, some cameos here. Here's uh, Fancy Man. Uh, he's a, a running gag character. Here's uh, what I say, it's uh, Sasami from Tenchi Muyu. And here's a loyal fan of mine, Eric Williams. I added him here. Because, you know, he, he actually uh, bought a commission from me. And I thought, hey, that's very cool of him. He's, he's, he's looking out for a brother. So I, I'm going to add him in this comic here. And this girl, she is from one of the quickies. Uh, the When Taylor shows them their his underwear, his Katie Knight underwear. The, this is one of the girls there. And Cassidy surprises Jeff because she likes to do that. She likes to... Uh, she, she likes to bother him. What's her deal? She likes to bother Jeff a lot. And she likes to tease him about the Jane thing, you know. Right behind the speech bubble, I drew a very funny uh, uh, bill for Jeff's uh, cap. And I, you know, added it on Instagram. So if you actually find me on Instagram, then you'll find that little sketch. So right behind here is a little twirly bill. Okay. All right, so DJ here, he enters the school. He has the same memories of Je uh, of as Jeff, you know, right before the, the the whole cloning thing. Then he becomes his own man. So yeah, he knows where the school is, Prince of Pukes. And yeah, Bobby Ambler makes a surprise appearance. Hey man, why are you not in Klazavs? I'm the hall monitor, cuz. You heard? And right he right here, you know, we thought, oh man, Bobby Ambler's the most popular guy in school. No one can ever beat him. Not even DJ. Or can he? Bam! I love this. I really love this. I mean, I, I know Bobby Ambler is based off of a, a friend of mine, you know. And I, and I like him and all that, but Bobby Ambler, the character, come on. He, he kind of had it coming. You no good poser. And then he, he uh, attempts to... Uh, hide him in the janitor's closet, but lo and behold, Kyle and Sophie are being intimate in that closet. Sodomites, yeah, that's a pretty powerful word for a, for a preteen comic, you know. Dry hump in school. I just wanted to, I just wanted to uh, gamble with the uh, with the mature uh, humor here. Look at that. DJ is not afraid to punch a girl. He is. He's a very gangster. I should say that. Very gangster. And I thought it was funny that uh, with this pose that Kyle should be in the middle right here. Because if it's uh, Sophie in the middle, then whew, I would uh, be in lots of trouble. I don't know. But yeah, it's not because of that. I, I just really thought it was um, a good... I, I really wanted to, uh, Kyle to be in the middle, you know. Sophie was not my choice of my, it, it was not my first choice, you know. All right, and this little face here is based off a sketchbook drawing of him, and he's laughing and he's sucking in air. That's a little uh, that's a, a little trivia. That's his little ability that he has. He laughs while he sucks in air. Try that. You can't do it. <laughs> Only DJ can do it. So we go to Kim's house, and she. Um, I, I don't know, Brass Bomber, I just made that up. Loki Stick, that's from the Avengers. You know, Loki's little weapon or something. So she finds the the cloning machine has been used, and she's like, oh no, the boys did this. And right here, this is a reused image that I've, uh, that I um, copy and pasted from the first draft of this episode. And uh, Jane looks so weird here. I think I don't. I think it's, it's because her eyes are so far apart. I don't know. Swell. That's like her little thing that she says. Instead of good, it, she says swell. She says swell instead of good or or cool. You know. 
And of course, Cassidy wants uh, Jeff and Jane to have a long time, so she drags Taylor away. So yeah. All right, mandarins. I just I just put a mandarin here because I had mandarins in my kitchen. So hey, this will be. I'll put some mandarins here. Jane likes mandarins now. <clears throat> And so DJ plays with the intercom, wants Jeff and Taylor to come into the principal's office. And right here, I, I just wanted to say, I just wanted us to say goodbye to Jane. Because, uh, you know, I just don't want Jeff to just leave her there. It's like, if we, it's like, if we just leave her there, you know? I don't know, I just feel weird that, that, that characters who won't appear in the, later in the episode don't get a proper goodbye or something like that. I just added this here, you know. Because it's a... Because that's what I do. Alright, some 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 page... Some, some posters here. School board meeting. Uh, be your wonderful self. Chess club. And uh, Taylor makes his uh, principal W in, uh, impression. Mission accomplished based on that one terrible photo. Of George W. Bush and that combat carrier. Is it a combat carrier? I don't know. Yeah. It is. He's on that carrier, you know. So, they see DJ for the first time. They are surprised, as they should be. This is, uh, this is George W. Bush, or excuse me, Principal W. Let's just say that. <laughs> Man, DJ is so badass. And he calls Jeff Faker, which is a ironic thing, because you know he's the Faker. You know what I mean? But I don't know. He may have a point because DJ is um, he represents the id of um, of Jeff's psychology. Yeah, a little psychology thing. You know. All right. Yeah. People have the id, the ego, and super ego. And I think it's either the ego or super ego that prevents us from doing uh, certain things because uh, we have to keep our image in public um, uh, decent. You know, so we worry what other people think about us. You know, that's the, that's our ego right there. DJ doesn't care. He doesn't give a shit. So he's like, "Hey, I'm the id. I don't have an ego or anything like that." Or maybe he does, but he doesn't have a super ego. I don't know. Look at that. Look at all that swearing. Uh, there's no swearing in the next episode, I, uh, or maybe there is, or some minor swearing, but nothing like that. So yeah, they find out the truth about DJ. You now he's gonna kill them, die animal boys. That's from uh, Ace Ventura. And look at this: what is a star hammer symbol doing in Principal W's office? That's so strange. That's tad strange. So DJ jumps out the window, and he calls them losers. That's always that's something that I always imagine in this episode. DJ running away and calling the boys losers. Then Taylor, after all that, after all that threatening and stuff, Taylor's like, he called us losers. So yeah, Jeff doesn't want to skip school since he's a nerd, but it's an emergency, you know. So yeah, this little cute cat clock, uh, a little good luck cat clock that Kim got. You wouldn't imagine her to have this, but you know, she hasn't. <laughs> Alright, so DJ calls Jeff, or, uh, or should I say he calls Kim's lab from a payphone. I don't know where he got some money from the payphone, he probably mugged some somebody. So, yeah, he threatens their friends' lives. And so Kim puts some uh, some chemicals in the uh, dy dynamic cannon that will melt uh, DJ because he's yeah, mostly made out of calcium. So, yeah, a shot of Kim's car. And right here, Lance Bennett. She mentions him, and Lance Bennett is a name that will appear uh, in later episodes. Just remember that name, Lance Bennett, uh, another inventor. So yeah, that's I just added that there because it's uh, important in the, to the series. And I don't know, this is a bit somber, but you know, with the whole suicide victims and everything, it's I thought, hey, if a if a cloning machine would be 
doing something uh, progressive. It should be, you know, to, to replace suicide victims. A person wants to, who wants to kill themselves makes a clone. The clone replaces, their, uh, per replaces them in their life. But the clone is uh, a bit happier, so, you know... The Lance Bennett tried to uh, to uh, tweak the emotion thing, but it didn't work. You know. Oh my flying Caesar! Jeff is a history nerd, so he does that. All right. So Walker's junkyard, it, indeed, it's the same junkyard from episode two, and here we go. This is the big one, the big page where that DJ just talks to himself. This is based off of a dumb game called Psycho Killer. Also known as Photography Killer, according to Retsupre. But the guy, you know, the psycho killer, you know, in his... In low quality, just talks to himself. But his DJ is like, DJ, yes, are you too weak to kill? No, as he blinks. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if that confused a lot of people. I hope it did. So Kim gets knocked out. And DJ is like, uh, you know, perched on top of a pile of filth. But here's something that's not filth. It's Guy from uh, one of my fans, Connor's characters. That's that's him. I think that's a doll of him. So, yeah. Of course, and right here, DJ reveals his name, which is a, a little secret uh, name that Jeff likes to uh, call himself a long time ago. Because he was insecure of the name Jeff, and I guess I, I guess in real life, I guess I was too, insecure of my own, of my own name, especially my last name. I hate, I hate it when people try to pronounce my last name. It's like I'm almost embarrassed of my last name. I, it, 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 I don't know. It's like I'm afraid people think my last name is um, weird or something. Yeah, I'm, I, I guess I am kind of uh, insecure or self-conscious about that. But yeah. All right, so here we go. Here's uh, DJ um, references some uh, some crazy people from real life. Tim McVeigh, the, the DC sniper, and James Holmes. Well, James Holmes, he shot up the Aurora movie theater. So that's that's uh, that's crazy. And look at this. There, here's here's a typo. All great men because they did what the wanted with no fear. It's supposed to be they. I'll I'll fix it before it it goes to print. Easier to hide the bodies. This is from the sketchbook. I, I made this in my sketchbook. A slow sign. And look. The cheese. The best character on the show. If you ever watch Rocco's Modern Life. And a star hammer symbol. Again. What the heck? What's up with these star hammer guys? And a bonus. Holy man. Hol uh, Jeff yells holy man twice in this episode. So here's a little lame sword fight, I guess, and a little Star Wars reference. Now I am the master. Only the master of evil, Deej. And DJ's like, you copy that quote from a movie. <laughs> so yeah. Alright, so Jeff had the advantage, but then he got um, hit with the lead pipe. And he's like, ow. And here's another movie reference, another quote. This is from the animated Street Fighter movie. What a little maggot! No one has ever plunged my face before. I clearly underestimated this man. That's M. Bison saying that. Alright, so Taylor takes the, the Mega Cannon. And uh, Jeff tries to convince DJ that, hey, maybe you're not evil. Maybe you're just like me deep down inside. But DJ, he doesn't love anybody. So he is a DJ. He calls Jane a whore. And that really makes Jeff angry. So he punches DJ. Doesn't affect DJ at all. So, but this will. The Lagun. And Taylor is about to save the day again. He always seems to save the day. Taylor, more than Jeff, you know. Alright, so. Right here. I don't know. I, I didn't write a script for this. I just uh, made up dialogue as I go. But DJ, you know, DJ is like, swearing a lot, but Taylor, he swore. He said bitch. And you know, Taylor's not the type to, to swear. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this, but I don't know. 
It's the only clever thing I can think of. Oh, yeah, so... He gets splashed. So they think that DJ will get melted into a... a puddle. Or something. Pwned, yeah, this is how you spell pwned. You know? I got... Uh, somebody... A fan told me that, hey, you spelled this... You spelled... I think he thought this was owned. But no, this is pwned. And I think you know, this is how you spell pwned. You know, this is video game talk. That's what Taylor likes to talk about, video games. Okay, so they find out that he, DJ, did not melt into a little puddle. Instead, he was... He got melted. A lot. Look at that. All white. All disgusting looking. This is supposed to represent, or reference, or something. I got the idea from Breaking Bad. You know when Gus got killed in the explosion, and you see, like, half of his skull... And all that, and I thought that looked amazing. I, that was one of my favorite TV moments. And I, me, being a copier, being a no good copier, wanted to do something like that. So it's this is it. I, I like to add little twists to my stories, and I guess this is the twist here. You did not expect this amount of gore in Jeff and Taylor. So this pretty much traumatizes the boys and they're like oh my god we killed somebody what what, what, what do we do so they shoved him in a in a car and uh, threw a trash bag on him just to make sure he's just buried there and Jeff just um, puts a, a board you know and then they're both in shock but then they got out of it they snapped out of it you know so Kim thought that he, that DJ is gone for good He's in a little puddle and everything, but the boys know the truth, and he's like, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, he's gone." And so they run away. Kim kind of um, um, tells them, "Hey, don't do that again, okay, boys." So, yeah, this is pretty much it. So yeah, we get a little a taste of Kim um, here, a little character development. Say, you know, Kim does not have a husband. She does not have any kids or anything. She's single. She's 33 and single, but she is more in love with her work than anything. But, you know, she cares about the boys. And I just want to... I want. I just want to show that to people. So, yeah. Uh, that's DJ right there. And I can understand why, how peop why people did not like this episode. You know, I can understand. <laughs> And it's okay, because, you know, whenever DJ is in, a, is in an episode, you know we're in a, for a wild ride or something like that. So, yeah, that's it. That's it for this video. It's over 30 minutes long. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you guys uh, understand my, my reasoning more. But, yeah, I, I, I know I, there's lots of people like to complain here and there about my, about the reasoning for my my episodes but yeah this is my vision I this is you know this is well, what's correct for me it's what's right but you know I know what I'm doing with Jeff and Taylor so so don't you guys worry I won't go off the rails I won't jump the shark or anything but for the next episode episode 12 like I said it's a, it's not as mature as DJ but it, it it'll have a It'll have some uh, dramatic feel to it. It will have a season finale kind of feel. Especially when, when, when you read the end of that episode. I just finished the script. Now I'm going to um, do the thumbnails and actually go to work. So, there you have it. This is it for, uh, for, for this video. I don't know when I'll upload the... Uh, the um, no talking about the original... Uh, DJ draft, but but yeah, I'll shut up now. So I'll leave you guys alone. <laughs> All right, Jeff and oh, excuse me, <laughs> JFM out. I am tired. I have to go to sleep. JFM out, and I'll see you guys in another video real soon. Goodbye.